Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. I'm Sarah. If you are looking for homestyle recipes made ketogenic, then you've come to the right channel. And tonight we are going to be making something extra delicious and it is going to be creamy meat lovers pizza. So come along with me and let's get started. So CJ and I have been practicing the ketogenic low carb lifestyle for over six years now. About five years ago, we made this delicious pizza. This month, CJ and I have been doing the extreme carnivore challenge. And so we have been practicing 30 days of a very restrictive carnivore diet. But as we are getting towards the end of our month, we are going to start incorporating some more carnivore foods, but a little bit more variety. This pizza is in fact fully carnivore and it is very delicious and very easy, and you should give it a try, even if you're not carnivore. So, the first thing that we are going to be doing is making our chicken crust, and you are going to need to preheat your oven to 500 degrees. Okay, so this is a chicken-based crust, which is really wonderful if you are practicing extremely strict macros, even if you're practicing the ketogenic lifestyle. A lot of people do total carbs, not net carbs, and so this is a way to still have pizza, but have it be completely in a very low, low, as low as you can go carb version. So you are going to need to begin with 10 ounces of cooked chicken. I am using canned chicken. I find this very easy. However, I do prefer a canned chicken that is a blend of dark and white meat. It is available on your grocery store shelves, but sometimes you have to look a little bit harder for it. I do like a little bit of dark meat in my canned chicken. You don't have to use canned chicken, but it's very easy and it's already prepared for you. If you already had cooked chicken lying around, you could just shred it up yourself and that would be fine as well. But you do need 10 ounces and you need it very well drained. So to your 10 ounces of chicken, you're going to add one egg. You are also going to want to add about one ounce of grated Parmesan cheese. And we are just going to mix this together until it's fully incorporated. And this is going to be cooked for about 10 minutes at a high temperature in our oven. And this is going to make a crust for our pizza. So we're just blending it to make sure that our egg went into our chicken. Chicken before the egg, ha ha. Okay, so we are fully combined. I have my baking tray here. When I originally made this recipe, I did not have the smaller baking trays and I used a large tray and that's completely fine, but I am going to use my smaller tray this time. I also have two silicone mats. So I'm going to put my chicken mixture on the bottom of one and place the other one over it so that I can use my rolling pin to get a square-like shape for my crust. You could use parchment paper for this step if you don't have silicone mats, but I definitely recommend them, and they're always linked in our Amazon favorites, and I use them all the time. So I'm just going to plunk this right in the center. And I'm just going to kind of shape it a little bit with my hands before I put the silicone on. Now I'm going to take my other mat and just put it down on top. And I'm just going to roll a little bit with my rolling pin. I'm just rolling a little bit with my rolling pin. Just trying to get a semi-rectangular shape. Okay, now I can use my silicone mat as a guide to further get my rectangular shape. 
and you don't have to do this in a rectangle. I mean, if you have a, you know, a pie um, or a pizza stone, something like that would be great for this. And of course you could make it in a round shape if you wanted, but I wanted to do a bit of a rectangle. And so I'm just kind of forming this. Okay, now I'm going to carefully slide it onto my baking tray. Okay, so there is our chicken pizza crust. Now I'm going to season mine just a little bit before I put it into the oven because I want it to be really pizza flavored because right now it is a completely neutral product. So the first thing that I'm going to sprinkle on is just a little bit of Italian seasoning. And this is just basil, oregano, rosemary, thyme, parsley, and garlic. So the next one that I'm going to be using was a recommended suggestion from one of our viewers. And this is Chef Paul Pud Holmes Herbal Pizza and Pasta Magic. So this is just seasoning and it doesn't have any carbs in it. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on to also give it that touch of pizza flavor. Okay, so there is our chicken crust pizza. And now I'm going to bake it once again, 500 degrees for about 10 minutes. So while our crust is pre-baking in the oven, we are going to go ahead and make our creamy Alfredo sauce for our pizza. So in a saucepan, you need three tablespoons of melted butter. To that, I'm going to add a half a cup of heavy cream. And we are just going to let the cream heat up with our butter. So we are basically just making a very simple Alfredo sauce to use as the pizza sauce for our meat lovers pizza. If you wanted to use a tomato based sauce instead, you could do that, but of course it would not make it a very low carb pizza because of the natural carbs in fresh tomatoes, but that is completely up to you. While my butter and cream are warming up to make my sauce, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of garlic. Garlic is what really makes Alfredo sauce sing, so I'm going to use a couple of sprinkles of garlic powder. And we are just going to wait for our cream to come up to temperature with our butter. Okay, our cream has warmed up nicely and I'm going to go ahead and add our other ingredient to form our Alfredo sauce. I have about a quarter of a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. And this is just going to melt and thicken our sauce. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside while we wait for our pizza crust to finish cooking in the oven and then we can continue making our pizza. Okay, it is time to get our pre-cooked crust out of the oven. Okay, so there it is and it has gotten nice and golden and I'm just going to let it sit for a minute before we add our other toppings. Okay, let's make some pizza. So we have our already pre-cooked chicken crust and it came out beautiful. It's nice and crispy. So the first thing that I'm going to lay down is our Alfredo sauce that we just made. going too far over the edge. I keep our sauce in the center of our pizza. The next thing that I'm going to add is about a cup of cheese and I'm going to sprinkle that down first. And I'm going to reserve the rest of this cheese for the top. This is mozzarella in case you're wondering. That's very traditional for pizza. You could use another type of cheese if you didn't want to use mozzarella. Now I did promise in the title that this is a meat lover's pizza. So besides the obvious, which is of course the meat crust, we are going to incorporate all the other meats. No fish, just meats. So we have pork, beef, and chicken. So the first thing we have is three slices of cooked crumbled bacon. I'm just going to sprinkle that on. There's our pork down. The next ingredient I have is about a half a pound of cooked crumbled ground beef. And I am 
just piling this high. Making sure we get some beef on every corner. Beef on every corner. That sounds like a restaurant name. Next we have some cooked cut up chicken thighs and I have seasoned them with a little bit of our Italian seasoning. And I don't think I'm going to use all of this. So you can do one to two thighs, depending on how much you want. This is getting to be quite a meat lover's pizza. Chicken in every bite, besides the obvious, of course. All right, we are all meated up. So we are going to put the rest of our cheese on the top now, evenly. And then of course this is going to go back in the oven to get warm and a little brown. So before I put this meat masterpiece in the oven, I am going to sprinkle it one more time on the top with a little bit of seasoning. I find that it looks really pretty when it's finished. Okay, into the oven again. Once again, 500 degrees. And I'm going to start about eight minutes. Of course, oven times vary and how much toppings you put on and all of that. So kind of the final cook will depend on what you've done, but I'm gonna do about eight minutes. And it goes. Oh my goodness, does that look yummy or what? Mmm, look at that. Cheese melting all over. I cannot wait to eat this. So obviously, right now, this is the surface of the sun. So please, in the interest of safety, boys and girls, wait for the pizza to cool down before you cut into it and eat it. Okay, so I am going to cut some of this and then CJ is gonna have a taste for us. Look at that delicious cheese. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Yummy. Look at the ooey cheese. I cannot wait to eat this. So there it is, our creamy meat lover's pizza. And CJ is gonna have a taste. Hi. Hi. It's time for some pizza. I bet you're excited after all the plain meat we've been eating. So this looks really good. Looks like a pizza. A lot of meat on it. Some pizza. It's really good. I don't know what's in that. Um, seasoning that I told you about but it gives it a little bit of a kick I mean it's not overwhelming but it does give it a kick it's good baby good I think people will like it I think people can adjust the amount of meat they put on it of course because even with the hamburger you didn't put all that hamburger on here you didn't have enough room anyway mm -mm. so I think it's really good and you can put vegetables you can do whatever you want it's just versatile. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a... If you're trying to do it for... Yeah, for keto. If you want to put more vegetables on it. Or vegetables on it. Because we don't have any. You can do that. Um, and this is kind of, I guess, be mainstream carnivore. Right. Versus B, B, B and E carnivore. Right, it's not extreme. It's just regular carnivore. But, yeah. Pretty versatile. You can do what you want with it. Well, it'd be good if, you know, if you want to still do low carb, but maybe you have a nut allergy, so you can't do fat head or something like that. It might be right. an alternative. And I, can, I can't tell that this is, the texture of this chicken, I can't tell that it's chicken at all until I just said that. I can kind of taste a little bit of chicken, but me just holding it, I can't tell that it's not some kind of, you know, floured crust so really good and i think people will like it and it looked like it was super easy to make it was bye <laughs>
people buying creams, and there's people having surgery, there's people doing squats and lunges and all kinds of stuff to get a bigger butt. And the people who have bigger butts are worried about their butt speed too big. And the little other skinny girls <laughs> want big butts. How do you know? You're not a skinny girl, so how do you know the thoughts I of skinny stuff girls? I see on Pinterest all the time. How you a big butt? Big butt exercises. Ten big butt exercises. Make your butt bigger. Put this cream on it. I'm concerned about what you're watching. It's just on our Pinterest feed. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not asking for anything about bigger butts because I'm not trying to get a big butt. Yes, okay. That's good to know. I don't think anybody's ever happy. That is probably unfortunately true. If you have straight hair, you want curly hair. If you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If you have brown hair, you want blonde hair. If you have blonde hair, you want brown hair. It's just, it, for girls, it goes on and on and on. I'm sorry y'all got all those issues. I know. You're very lucky that you were born with a Y chromosome.